Hello, my name is Kerryoth, and today we are going to take a little look at seven of the most gruesome new rules for the Death Guard. Now, I've skimmed through this, and I think there's a couple of things in there that didn't show up in the previous stuff that they did for the rules previews for the Death Guard, because it's been this weird, stretched like elongated progress where they progress over 94 percent of ghosts reside in our oceans the other six percent live inside bears and white dogs it's been this weird long process seamless seamless edit there uh where like the codex was supposed to come out but then it didn't come out because there were delays but now it is coming out and so we had rules previews but then it didn't really lead to anything and it's it's been a ride it's been a real trip if you're a death guard player but there is some fun stuff in here, so we're going to take a look, we're going to take a little glance. So here we go. Seven of the most gruesome new rules for the Death Guard. I really do like that picture. It's, I mean, that's one of the best Death Guard models they've done for me. With all the exhaust and stuff sticking out the top, it's not too fleshy and growthy. It's, it's good. It's a good one. So, this week we're previewing a whole host of miasmic morsels from the new Death Guard Codex, which is available to pre-order this Saturday. And there's seven things. Seven of the favourite new rules. Of course it's seven. Number of Nurgle. We all know that. First off, Mortarian's Warlord Traits. Back in December we gave you a first look at the new datasheet for Mortarian. And, uh, but many questions were left unanswered. What, for instance, is his Warlord Trait? It is thusly. Named character Mortarian. Warlord Trait. Revoltingly Resilient. Living Plague. Arch Contaminator. So he has three. He's got three of them. Nice. Uh, we've already seen how tough the Chosen of Nurgle are, thanks to their disgustingly resilient rule, which has changed. It's now removing one damage, except unless the thing's only got one damage on it, and then it removes none. But they have gone up by one wound, so that they're up to... Yeah, it's all... That was a very interesting conversation that happened in the comments about that one. But now that he's got revoltingly resilient too, it'll be even harder to put a scratch on the favoured son of Nurgle, combined with this host of plays ability giving him a choice of one more warlord trait from among the six plague companies he's stuffed to bursting with special rules to terrorise your opponents with. Yeah, yeah, I quite like that, having a whole bunch of different traits going along with him. That's, it's fun, it's cool. Two is more durable pox walkers. Everyone's Favourite shambling sacks of sepsis. This is getting ridiculous now. How am I supposed to read this? I can barely talk. You throw in all these words that have got the same... Have always been a mainstay on the table alongside their plague marine betters. What the unwise might have seen as a mere meat shield before about to become a threat to be respected. So, of particular note is their close combat prowess is no longer determined by the size of the mob. Instead, they hit on a 4 plus as standard. Interesting. Coupled with a new base toughness of four, they're sure to form a dangerous wall of moaning, groaning bodies, daring the enemy to come within their grasp. So you've got the uh, you've got their updated their updated stats there. Movement four, weapon skill four plus, strength three still, but toughness four. There is a seven plus save. I'm assuming that they will have some sort of there'll be some sort of aura or ability that actually allows them to get get a six plus at some point. That would make sense to me, anyway. Just because it makes sense to me, though, doesn't mean it's actually going to happen. That's you know. If you, by the way, like the look of them, there's a, there is a place you can buy them. It's the affiliate link in the description. So, three. Tougher Death Guard Chaos Lords. Oh, hang on. Wait. You might think all this newfound power comes with a price tag, but they're even cheaper than before. <laughs> okay. I, I skimmed over that the first time. Interesting. So, tougher Death Guard Chaos Lords. Regular Chaos Lords of the Death Guard have, of course, rejoices to now have the resilience to match their pestilent brothers in arms. While originally they had more in common with their unblessed peers among the Traitor Legions, now both Chaos Lords and Sorcerers of the Death Guard have Toughness 5, Contagions of Nurgle, and Disgustingly Resilient to better fit into your armies. I like that a lot. That's that's good. That is That is good. Actually being able to take that stuff without it feeling weird or being inexplicably not either not as like tough or not as strong as the rest of it. Fixing that, nice. Like it. Four is more contagions. So they mentioned last week that each play company will have its own special brand of gift to bequeath unto their warlord. And here are two more. So we've got the droning. So the warlord is surrounded by a cloud of fat plague flies who harass the Death Guard's enemies and eat away at round casings, coolant vats, and fuel containment canisters. They have the following ability. 
the droning contagion. While an enemy unit is within contagion range of this unit, at the start of your opponent's movement phase, half that enemy unit's move characteristic until the end of the phase. Oh, I really like that. That's fun. Yeah, that's fun. I like that. That's cool. Just being so surrounded by horrendous, <laughs> like, swarms of plague insects, it's makes, it literally makes it harder, harder to move. Although, weirdly, the actual flavour text for that doesn't 100% match what the actual thing does. Because the thing is half the enemy unit's move characteristic, but the the thing, the, the flavour text, eats away at round casings, nothing to do with movement, coolant vats, maybe? And fuel containment canisters? A bit, yeah. Round casings got nothing to do with movement, though. What? Uh, just... Just threw me off there a little bit. Just threw me off. It's fine. Warlord trait. Nurgle's fruit. Strange fruit. The strange lumps that form on victims of Nurgle's fruit, also known as the boil blight. Lump and splatter or crawling postulants are easy to spot at distance for the Death Guard. Sure. This warlord has the following ability. Nurgle's fruit contagion while an enemy unit is within contagion range of this unit. Each time an attack is made by a friendly Mortarian's Chosen Sons model against that unit, the target does not receive the benefits of cover against that attack. Okay, okay, cool, cool. I have to admit, I really like the flavour of, like, the, 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 the droning is, is fun. Nogal's Fruit, fine. Don't like it quite as much as the other one, even though it's probably in some... It's probably going to be more widely... No, is it going to be more widely applicable? I don't know. Stuff like that, it very much depends on the setup of the board, where everything is. I don't know if that's really something you can fully call just off the bat. So, five, Death Shroud Terminators fight harder and run faster. I always love the idea of seeing one of these lads run. I mean, I know they've got to get into the fight, you know, <laughs> preferably at least slightly quickly, but the idea of something like that running... It just... Uh, my brain can't... I, I just can't see it. Your choppiest Terminators just got even choppier, while star billing might go to their increased weapon skill of 2+. plus. Ooh. Befitting the close combat specialist of the Death Guard, their vicious man-reapers won't be left behind with two new close combat profiles for you to choose from. So we have... Yeah, so we have the Man Reaper, and each time an attack is made with this weapon, you select one of the profiles below. So you've got Cleave, obviously both of them are melee. Cleave is uh, Strength plus 3, AP minus 3, Damage 2. Each time an attack is made with this weapon profile, subtract 1 of the attack roll, yep. And the other one is Scythe, which is Strength plus 1, AP minus 1, Damage 1. Plague Weapon, of course. And each time an attack is made with this weapon profile, make 2 hit rolls instead of 1. Okay, interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I quite like that. That's fun. Yeah, that's cool. So you kind of you you kind of need to uh. You need to decide what you're going for. I mean, you've you've got cleave is cleave is pretty brutal, but being able to do two hit rolls instead of one with scythe is is quite nice. Yeah, different, different, uh, different modes for whoever you're facing there. I like that. That's cool. Neither elite warriors nor massed infantry will interrupt the inexorable advance of these silent messengers of Nurgle and advance. They will. The Death Rider will be doing their cardio. It's their heavy cataphracty Terminator plate. No longer slows them down and allows them to advance just as quickly as everyone else. Nice. And finally, they are equipped to spread... Nurgle's concoctions even further than the rest of their brethren, adding three inches to the range of their contagions of Nurgle ability, thanks to the charms of contagion. No oh, oh, God, I'm liking this. This is fun. This is fun. Custom contagions for your crusades. Oh, interesting. I didn't get down this far before. So, all new suite of crusade rules will take your campaign to corruption to new heights. With wonderfully thematic battle traits, I really stumbled over that, could you tell, and requisitions to upgrade your units of particular note is the ability to craft and customise your own bespoke plague to spread amongst your opponent's army. I really like this. I really like this. This is this is cool. So by randomly determining a vector, an infection, and a terminus, you can bring all sorts of unholy effects to bear upon your foes. So oozing, ravaging sores. So the vector is oozing. Each time a player carrier model from your army makes an attack against the unit, if an enemy model is destroyed, that unit is contaminated. Okay. The infection is ravaging. 
So when it becomes contaminated, it suffers D3 mortal wounds. At the start of your command phase, each contaminated unit suffers one mortal wound. Jesus, that's, that feels brutal. Terminus is sores, and at the end of your opponent's turn, roll 1d6 for each contaminated enemy unit, subtracting 2 if the unit being rolled for was contaminated this turn. On a 4+, plus, that unit is no longer contaminated. Okay. that's f I like that. That's that's a really cool like thematic, thematic thing. It being something that you can randomly determine, like a plague that that you kind of come up with. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. That's a really fun rule. That's really fun. Nice work. And finally, the fetid bloat drones fly into close combat. Another unit mentioned last week has a new lease on life with an upgraded close combat capability thanks to the fearsome flesh mower. Excellent name. 10 out of 10 name. So, obviously, melee strength plus 1, AP minus 2, damage 2. It's a plague weapon, of course, and each time an attack is made with this weapon, make three hit rolls instead of one. With a horde spooking maximum of 12 attacks each and a new weapon skill of 3+, plus, bloat drones will have to think long and hard about whether they want to spread the gifts of Nurgle up close or from afar. They've lost a wound, but they no longer lose effectiveness as they're damaged. So you have more reason than ever to fly them right across the field. Ooh, oh, I like that. I like that. That's that's a, again. That's kind of that's a fun. That's a fun trade there. That's a fun trade. Losing a wound might be a bit of a sting, but not losing any effectiveness as they lose wounds. That feels pretty big. That feels pretty big. Yeah, like it. Like it. Also, the bloat drone is still a great model. Really good model. It's horrendous. It's creepy and weird and... Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's fun. That is fun. So, Grandfather Nurgle does indeed provide. That's all we have today. There's still plenty more Death Guard content coming this week. Interesting. Alright, so we'll have to keep an eye on all of that. I really like that. I really like that. That's fun. That's cool. So, there's some cool rules in there. There's some fun stuff. I have to admit, the standout thing for me there is actually the Crusade thing, which... I've not been paying a vast amount of attention to because, to be honest, a lot of the games that I play are pretty, like, narrative in nature anyway. I you, you know full well at this point that I don't massively do the competitive thing, although there might be something happening in the near future which could be interesting on that front. Um, but the Crusade stuff, because I've already been doing kind of just fun narrative battles or, you know, daft battles for the sheer hell of it where I'm not bothered about whether I win or lose. It's kind of like, well, I already did that sort of thing anyway. Introducing more rules into it is fun, but it's not something that massively grabbed me the more I saw of it. But stuff like that, stuff like the, like, your own bespoke play, I really like that kind of, uh, that kind of, that kind of integration and making stuff just more flavorful and more interesting. It's, I think we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to read into it a lot more because I'm I'm liking that. That's cool. That's fun. So there's some interesting stuff in there. Let me know what you're liking the look of the most in the comments down below. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things. And as always, if you would like to support the channel, you are gonna buy some plastic crack as we all are. Then you can do so using the affiliate link in the description. You pay the same as you would otherwise, but I get a little something for it. It's a nice way to support the channel without actually doing anything different or extra than you would normally do. So that is an option that is there for you if you wish. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.